Hey everyone, welcome back to The Clueless Dad. Uh, as you can see, I'm not in Japan right now. I'm actually back at Hong Kong. I had to come back for work for a couple days, and while I'm here, I still have stuff to share with you. So this is actually a stroller that we got um, as a gift here in Hong Kong. It's from Stoke, Stoke, Stoka, Stuka, not exactly sure how you pronounce it. It's a Norwegian brand. Uh, pretty fancy uh, and as you can see not only do I have a stroller this is actually the Stoke Scoot uh, but we have a couple accessories that I also got as part of the deal uh, stroller cup holder stroller blanket and this is kind of an attachable uh, diaper bag slash storage extra storage so uh, I'll skip those uh, for today do them in a separate video and let's focus on this guy first uh, so this is the Scoot. It's not the highest, fanciest, most expensive one. Uh, that's the Explory, uh, which is quite expensive. Uh, this one, I think, retails in most countries around 600 US. Now, the key thing is it's a Norwegian company, but of course, made in China. Since my kid is hopefully not going to be chewing on this too much or ingesting it, uh, I'm not too worried about it. And given that this is... Um, sold in the EU and sold in the US, I'm sure the uh, quality standards on the materials and stuff is a lot higher than if I were to buy a local uh, Chinese brand here in Hong Kong or across the border in China. So anyway, key things that we get from here, three year warranty, uh, Stoke extended warranty, and uh, one of the other big deals that I noticed when I was trying to bring this back from the store is this box is pretty freaking heavy. Um, just the box alone is something like 15 kilos. So um, that's upwards of what, 30 something pounds? So even if you figure in the weight of the uh, manual and the guide and other packing materials, it's still gonna be pretty heavy. Having had to carry this thing all the way home uh, from the store downtown, I can tell you it's definitely a heavy box. So I'm not looking forward to having to lug this scooter around too much. But uh, once it has some wheels on it, it will hopefully be a little bit easier. Uh, so anyway, let's take a, take a look inside. Dun, dun, dun. Got a wheel. Another wheel. Two more wheels. This looks like the chair, foot, step. And now we have the big piece. Oh, this is pretty heavy. So this is the main frame, and I can already tell this is at least, I don't know, maybe 15 pounds. It's a very thick manual. Okay, it's in like 15 different languages, but uh, definitely thick. Who's gonna read that? Okay, some nice, easy to understand pictures. Okay, so Norway is not uh, Sweden, but I guess Scandinavian design is Scandinavian design. So nice and easy to understand. If they did their job, I won't need this to figure out how to get it together. And last but not least, we have, I believe this is a sun visor. So there we have it, that's everything in the box. Okay, so where to get started? Let's start with the frame. Okay, so it's just this white button here on the frame to unlock it. And here we go. And so yeah, that's the main frame, obviously. And here's the handle. Okay, so let's start with the wheels. Can't go wrong with those, right? So. Pretty nice. Um, so basically, I think this just snaps in. Yeah, pretty easy actually. So I'm lucky in that my kid is actually not here, he's still in Japan, so I don't have to worry about these plastic bags getting uh, in the wrong hands, but uh, anyway, so there's a little foam here to cover it, and as you can see, there's a basically a push-on hub, which I guess locks in place. So you can actually see there's a brake lever here, and you can see, I think you guys can see, that when I pull that, this metal bar goes in towards the center of the wheel. Uh, I think you guys can see there's a bunch of grooves in here. Um, so when you pull that tab to lock 
the wheels, uh, that bar comes and locks into one of these notches. So uh, that's how the back wheel lock works, and it does it on both sides at once. So uh, rather than pushing on one wheel or the other and forgetting which one is on or off, you can basically lock both back wheels at once. One other interesting thing about the wheels is it actually says uh, inflate to 30 PSI, which is similar to a bicycle tire. Um, but then I don't see any actual place to fill it, so I'm not sure exactly how that works. Uh, but I guess if I get a flat, I'll figure it out. Okay, so two wheels on. So front wheel, similar, it's on a uh, spindle, I guess, and uh, can rotate. So this one just snaps, snaps in place. So on here, there's also a pull tab and a button, which I think you can see. And uh, I tested it out on the wheel I already put in. So if you push the button, it actually ejects the wheel if you want to take it off. And if you uh, pull the tab down, it can lock this in place if you don't want it to be rotating. So let's try that. Does that work? Yeah, okay, so it locks it in to go forward. So for the back wheels also, there's a way to pop them off by pulling on a tab, but I didn't notice it before. Yeah, there we go. So if you want to keep it rotating, you click it in. If you want to have it free to rotate, as you pull it out. And this will lock, this will keep it out of the way. There we go. Okay, we have our step. Uh, this one I'm not exactly sure if you really need it, especially for a smaller kid uh, who's not going to be walking and climbing in and out. But uh, it can go either on the front and it just snaps in place, I believe. So there's a pin on here and on this side and you've got to twist and pull to get it out. Um, but then it just snaps in. I've actually already seen kind of scuffs up the inside here so by the time you've used this a couple times it's gonna look like it's been chewed up but that's okay um, it's I guess it's aluminum so it's not gonna go anywhere um, and then you can also fit it here on the back um, again depending on which direction the kid is gonna be facing and whatnot I guess there's two two positions here so um, yeah if you get it right on the hole it actually fits pretty, snaps in pretty easily. If you miss it, not so easy. There we go, okay. So, uh, the only thing is, I guess it depends on which direction you're gonna be putting stuff in this bottom basket. So, um, to me right now, I probably would just completely leave this off because it's only gonna make it harder to get into the bottom. Uh, anyway, so, that's the step, and last but not least, of the major parts, we have the actual seat itself, the pram carriage seat part, which is uh, not too heavy, um, pretty good solid quality, of course you want it to be solid. Um, and now the trick with this is, uh, I think these, there's two of these uh, slots in here, one on this side, one on this side. And this should just go right in on here. There should be uh, corresponding pegs. And uh, you just click these white things to release them. So basically slides in here, releases from there. Uh, and of course, it depends on which direction you want the kid to face. Face back, face forward. Um, so let me put him in. Since our son is only a couple weeks old, we're going to definitely want him facing backwards. So it just goes in straight down and should click in place. Um, and now, seat folds down. Uh, you've got your little seat belt in here. This is actually similar to the car seat. I don't know if it's absolutely necessary. I guess if he's sitting up like this, it probably is. But uh, if you're going to have him lie down, I don't think you need a five-point harness with all these clips on it, but 
better safe than sorry. Uh, once he's running around, you probably need to restrain him. So here's our cover. Uh, this one has also a should be a uh, mesh. I think you guys can see that. Um, so this is good for ventilation in the summer. Um, it should be thick enough so even if some sun comes in, he's not really dying from uh, direct sunlight. Checking the label here, hand wash warm. Do not bleach or dry clean. Do not tumble dry or iron. Uh, wash separately, remove front rib before washing. So uh, it's good to have this be removable. Um, probably this whole thing snaps off, I'll check it later. Um, but uh, it's pretty cool. And of course this visor can snap. There's some buttons here to snap it, to keep it folded down. Um, but probably not a big deal, just to fold it over. Um, it has some nice reflective uh, coating here. So if you're out at night, uh, cars can see you. Um, I don't know if there's any elsewhere, but there is there at least. We have this now, which is a strap which goes in, and there's actually two straps here. And I believe, yeah, here we go. So if the kid is like this, he's actually quite, quite recumbent. He's down flat. There's a zipper here to uh, take this whole thing off, I believe, off of the case. Um, and so because we have these two different lengths, depending on how far down you want the kid, this is sort of sitting all the way up with the short one. This is halfway down. So this is the halfway down, uh, whatever that is, like 40 degrees, 45 degrees. Um, and then undo both of them, eat both hands, and then now you can get him not quite flat, but almost flat. Um, and so yeah, and one, one of the things I've heard a lot online is uh, the main things people like about this is not only this nice adjustable, um, adjustable handle, but then also this is really deep, so even if you have a pretty big kid, um, you know, as long as he's willing to lie down flat, he can fit all the way back up in here. This is like way, you know, longer than my arm, so quite deep. Let's see how hard it is to switch the direction. So, first time ever. Voila. Actually, that's pretty good, right? So, even if you had a bigger kid, uh, he could probably fit you know, his head all the way up here, feet there, uh, feet here, and he could step in and out. So, um, not too bad. So here we have our plastic cover. Um, and if we put it on, if we roll this out, you can see this is the full extension of the sunshade, which is actually pretty good. This is actually removable. If you guess if you don't need it. Um, or it can tuck can actually tuck underneath too, um, sort of pushes this out. And then we have also this rain cover now, so let's try to get this guy on. It just sort of has some elastic around the edges. Pretty much covers everything. Uh, there are some nice air holes along the side, you can't see it really well. But basically this entire piece has some ventilation holes. Plenty, plenty of air can get in through here, so um, that's the rain cover part. Pretty easy to take on and off, I think. Comes off in seconds. Folding it up might be a little bit more tricky. Stick it in the bottom. So this is an extra shield. I don't know if it's for bugs or if it's for shade. But uh, this one actually has snaps here. So if I had to guess, Something like that, perhaps. Keep the bugs off your kids. If you're in uh, Zika country or dengue fever country, um, he'll be nice and protected. So that's basically what it comes with, uh, not including the accessories. 
So here we are. Um, locks in place pretty well, easily. Unlocks pretty easily. Jump curbs. Uh, this is adjustable as shown before. I think you have to be pretty tall for this to be comfortable. Uh, anyone who's probably in the five foot six plus range, uh, up to maybe six foot something, this is probably the best. If you're nice and petite, there's a one step down, it's probably good if you're, you know, five foot to five foot six. And if you're really short, you might want to keep this. Actually, this is better for probably just keeping it out of the way uh, if it's in a hallway or something. Um, so yeah, so I'll keep it basically straight. A little bit of play in it. The aluminum is flexible enough, so I think that'll absorb some of the shocks. Um, pretty solid, you know. Uh, for me, the the weight was one of the big issues. Uh, this is not so bad. If I had to carry this up and down some stairs, it's not the end of the world. I probably would have preferred a lighter one. Um, let's try it again, just taking it apart. So basically, just grab this weight clip here and this part comes off so there is a white button and you can't just push it you actually have to slide it and then push so it's kind of a fail safe and so if you do that you have a flat slide and push handle comes down this can fold up so between the two of them you can fit it in your car I think pretty easily or uh, under the seat or in the train etc and it won't come out until you push it again. So the next question is that I have is can you fold it without taking the seat off? So let's try that. Let's go into backwards facing position. Okay, so backwards facing position now. Oh, pretty good. So I think depending on if you have this step installed or not, uh, it can probably fold even more, but basically, yeah, if you take this out, if you take that out, not too bad, um, and then the question is, can you just, I guess, yeah, you can, you can actually kind of fold this up out of the way and lift it up, and now this is not light, um, I can handle a couple flights of stairs, but I definitely wouldn't want to live in a walk up and have to carry this thing up downstairs all the time. So, here we are fully folded with the handle and the seat in there. So it is in one piece, but it's definitely not light and it's not too small. And I'm actually getting kind of sweaty wrestling with this thing. So here we have it, the Stokes Scoot. Um, I'm really eager to test it out on the road, obviously with my kid. Um, my initial perceptions is the build quality is pretty good, hopefully so if you're paying this much for it. Uh, I'm obviously no expert, I'm kind of clueless, but I did look at a lot of these strollers, um, both here and in Japan, before getting this one. And I have to say that the main thing with this one is it is effing heavy. Um, so 30 pounds, you know, I was comparing, so this is, this is a good 12, 15 kilos. Um, some of the ones I saw in Japan for, especially for the price, there were some that were in the 200 to $300 range that were only about maybe eight kilos or less. Um, and obviously for bigger kids, there's sort of those super fast folding ones that were even lighter. They were only like four or five kilos. So to compare that to this thing, which is double, triple the weight, um, is a is a big drawback. Okay, so thanks for watching. This has been the Stokes Scoot unboxing and initial review. Uh, please don't forget to like and leave a comment if you have any questions or feedback. If you have the Stokes Scoot and you have any uh, real world experiences that you want to share, please let us know. Uh, don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more and please check out our other videos for unboxings of some Western products, some Japanese products and other Coolest Dad advice that we've gathered in our short three weeks of fatherhood um, and of course I'm learning all the time 
So by the time you check this video out, there hopefully will be more and more insight and uh, help that I can offer you to the new Clueless Dads and hopefully even something to the experts. Okay, thanks a lot. Bye. Two-way carrying. Still changing day. So let's take a quick look. Snap them in place. You get it right. Okay, so there's one.